Once we believed that birds were messengers between humans and the supernatural world. We would interpret the flight and songs of birds to foretell the future. We came to understand that bird behavior heralds the change of season and warns us of the coming of storms. Miners once brought tiny songbirds, canaries, down into coal mines. When the canary stopped singing and fell from its perch, this was a signal to the miners that their own life was in danger. Today, once again, birds have something to tell us. Has anybody got any questions from that that they'd like answering or try and answer? Yeah, uh, one thing that didn't flag up there was what's happening in Indonesia. They play the festival of songbirds, and the, the rarer the songbird becomes, the more it's worth. Yeah. So it gets rarer until it's disappeared, and that's happening right now in Indonesia. Yeah. Because, I mean, uh, from the 60s, I think, uh, you know, government policy give people something to do. So, And it, it stemmed from something yeah. as stupid as that. Uh, uh, it, it, to, to a friend of mine has visited Indonesia, right. um, and he said that there's so much stuff that they collect, even things like woodpeckers. You know, anything they can collect, they will get. Yeah. Um, and of course, what they're waiting for really is probably us to go along as foreigners go and I'll give you some money for it, you know, and then release it. But then you know, somebody else has got to catch it again. It's, it's a mindset change that needs to come in. But you used to be able to say you'd go into Europe and you'd see the same Europeans doing the same with songbirds. There's owls as well. Yeah, catching they're, they're just catching the anything and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I remember when Harry Potter first came out in the UK that you could buy owls in Manchester at, at £80 because kids wanted an owl, because Harry Potter had an owl, you know. Um, I don't I said, Jed's with us today and, and he's just returned from being bird watching all over there. He went looking specifically for woodpeckers and he said, you know, he went in there and the guys were really worried that if you show, you know, like if you were a, a white person over there, you're seen to be maybe you're, you're a journalist filming. And he saw a, a flame back woodpecker there and he was asking about it and the guy goes, oh, here, yeah, I've got another one here. I've got a matching pair, but in two separate cages. Um, I think it was how many woodpeckers did you see there, Jed? Wild? In Indonesia. Yeah. So more in the market than in the market. Yeah, so, I, I, yeah, it's something that, we, you know, like, is a mindset change that needs to go all around the world. I know our SPB are doing stuff in, um, in Sumatra and places like that, you know, they've, they've developed reserves there. But it's an education thing that's got to go on a long time. And how much can you say, well, you've done, you've done wonders with albatrosses. They've sort of like stopped the long line fishing. They've done all that sort of thing. Now they need to move to another part of it. But again, that comes with, with money and time and people that you can educate into it. Yeah. Um, although we're talking about were catching birds, and there was the French waterman catcher, who obviously everyone hating his guts here, you know. That, for me, the main problem is not him, and it's not people in Indonesia catching birds, as bad as that is. It's the big picture, the chemical companies. Yeah. And uh, I, I think that loss change. Yeah. The, the telling bit of that was when the guy that the farmer in Holland has to get a glove on to be able to pick up his seeds. Yeah. You know, if, if you're gonna be picking up seeds that you're gonna then put in the ground, why would you need the glove? You know, and, and if anybody's, you know, you can see as he was cut, you can see that he's got loads of, his, his thumb looked rather disgustingly dirty, which is normally when you ever see it nails up close. But you, you're looking at that and you think to yourself, farmers are just always, it's, they're not, not that they're not clean, it's just that they're always hands on people, so they're always picking up stuff. So. A bit of dirt shouldn't bother him, so to be able to pick up his seeds and think I've got to put a glove on first is, is, is a total thing. I mean, I always look when you see the guys who are spraying glyphosate, um, herbicides around them, they're all like all suited up, suited up for a reason. They know it's got to make a difference. But yeah, there's a long way. So, apart from uh, you know, paying our RSPB memberships and things like that, um, what other benefits do you get from it? Give me something practical to do. 
I feel like going out now and finding a French person and beating them up. <laughs> 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 Just thinking that we're only just down the corner from where there was a big brawl with a load of Germans in Liverpool the other night. No, Maureen, you tr you've trouble causing you. Um, what can we do? Oh, yeah, you know, like. Small thing. The silhouettes stick them on the glass windows of the office you work in. Well, yeah, I've actually Small got thing. silhouettes that are invisible to humans, but are visible to birds on my windows. Birds have got better eyesight than us anyway. No, but they're, they're really good because, okay. you know, they don't even have to obstruct your view, but the birds don't hit my wind back windows anymore. Mm. You know, where did I mean, you get them? I got them off the, inter them off the internet. It was, some, uh, it was a, a company that sold bird food. I forgot the name of it now, but they were really effective. So but for the first thing I would probably say is, you know, like, the, there's obviously BirdLife International. You know, there is RSPB, but, you know, like, yes, how to help others around the world would be somebody like BirdLife International who are there for, joined up with every society that has taken part around the world. Um, obviously, in French, the, there is their own French version because although RSPB is very big, obviously, in the UK, there's over one million members, lots of the smaller countries are still dealing in the... The 20, 20,000, 30,000 members, you know, and if they get that UK support, maybe that might help them see that, you know, people are interested in their country as well. Do we have any issues with high rise buildings in and around Liverpool with bird strikes? Yeah, we've picked up, uh, there's been a number of woodcocks that have been collected that have been found dead. Um, Dale Street uh, being one area, um, Liverpool one was where I collected one from, so, you know, it does happen quite regularly. Whether we have them, it, it's been well documented of bird strikes on wind farms on land, but not wind farms at sea. That could be a different thing altogether. But, yeah, it does happen. And Just a tiny bit of moderate cheer. I mean, that film of May 2015, as, as, if I think I'm right in saying, nic neonicotinoids have now been banned in the EU and therefore in this country. I mean, it, it's it's quite interesting that, that things like the vultures in, in India and places like that, the, you know, their numbers have been decimated by just one chemical, di, um, like but like that's supposed to be given to humans for bad backs and stuff like that. Um, knowing farmers that you know, like they're, they're quite prone to leaving, keeping chemicals for 20, 30, 40 years and still having them and then eventually only being inspected to get rid of stuff. But yeah, it, it's, it is a way of changing things. Anyone else? Hopefully you thought it was a good way of spending your Sunday afternoons. Yeah. yeah. You were all quiet. You know? I'm, I'm more used to hearing the rustle of popcorn and sweets and everything, you know? Or, or the opening of beer cans and bottles of wine. <laughs>